So coding happens in cycles. It's a day-to-day -day process and engagement at the small textual level, and then stepping back and trying to think about what's happening at a textual level. I'm gonna talk about memo writing and why memo writing is important for the coding process. In order to code, you are writing in on the text, whether you're doing this manually or with a software. You're writing summative, clarifying statements about line by line or paragraph by paragraph information. You're writing, writing, writing on the data. A memo is really important because a memo will help remind you along the process about what did I write about today? What struck me today? Did I notice something that I expected to see, that I expected to learn based on my literature review? Or did I learn something totally new? What patterns are emerging that I'm noticing when I'm coding? What contradictions are emerging that I'm noticing as I'm coding? And what possibilities or problems am I um, encountering as I'm doing this? So your memo writing is important for giving you a log of your coding process, as well as it enables you to write about how your coding and how your data are helping you think about your lit review and your final conclusions. Coding is a slow process. People who are used to doing statistical analysis, you finally get your data organized in a way that you can run a model and you press the button run and it runs and now it's analysis. Coding is much slower because it's in the reads, thinking about it and then stepping back. So keeping a memo and keeping different types of memos to help remind you where you are in the process and what you're thinking about is a really important way of moving from the coding to the theoretical intervention. And it also helps you write up. Um, so it is a way to feel like you're making progress when it feels very slow. This will be a very succinct way to talk about cycles of coding. Generally, we think about coding as an iterative process where you move from the small level to the big level and back to the small level. And you do it often, even if you're not writing about it in your memos, you tend to do about it, you, you tend to do this intuitively. So your first cycle codes, you approach as what emerges from the data at the textual level. So you're reading, examining the data thoroughly, and you get your first impressions, and you are going page by page, line by line, making notes about what you understand. Second cycle coding is when you step back and look at your notes and you're categorizing or collapsing your codes to understand your patterns. And the patterns, again, are around frequency, sequence, similarity, and difference, although there could be other kinds of patterns as well. And cycle one and cycle two happen over and over and over again. So one thing to think about is if you have 15, 30, 150, 2,000 interviews, you don't want to do first cycle coding through all of those interviews first. It's not always necessary. Your first cycle codes you could do if you select out 5, 20 interviews. You can select them out and do first cycle, like commit to doing first cycle coding through those first 5 to 20 interviews. And then those can give you your set codes. That gives you a pretty good idea of the main codes and themes you're going to write from. It can obviously emerge that other codes will become important as you do coding in other, with other interviews or other visual data. But often people think they need to do first cycle coding, this very slow in the trees process through all of their data. And that's actually not really true. You can do a sample of that first and then do a second cycle with that sample, get an idea of what codes could be collapsed, which codes could be expanded, which codes are going to be important, which codes are not going to be important, and then use your second cycle coding process to guide you through the coding of the rest of your data, the rest of your interviews, or the rest of your visual data. Always keeping in mind that you might still come across things that you didn't expect. So it's not that you just want to say, I've done five interviews and I'm just going to use that. You still want to have an eye open for things that might emerge in your subsequent interviews. It's just that you don't necessarily need to be quite as in the trees about it. Your third cycle coding is actually a lot like memo writing. It's considering the substantive, theoretical, political, methodological interventions that you're making on the basis of, of your coding process. So cycle one and cycle two, you're going in and out of all the time. And cycle three is, it's good to go in and out of all the time by keeping a memo, but this is where you're going eventually when you're writing up. 